Hi guys, back with another video. So today we have a little bit different CPU in the spotlight, the uh, 7350K. Uh, since early 2017, uh, the 7350K uh, is still the fastest uh, two core uh, CPU out there on the market and ever released. And for uh, dual core uh, overclocking scores category uh, on sites like HWBot, uh, that CPU is a huge thing because dual core category is very uh, popular. Uh, dual core CPUs were the most common mainstream CPUs back in the Core 2 Duo or Core 2 days and uh, the very early days of uh, Core series CPUs with, as all the uh, Core i3 CPUs were all uh, dual cores. So uh, the 7350K is the only Intel uh, dual core uh, CPU with hyperthreading that has unlocked multiplier, uh, which the K in the end uh, stands for. So uh, this CPU is still the fastest uh, dual core CPU out there on the market. There is no uh, uh, newer CPU out there on the market with the newer Coffee Lake CPUs or that kind of thing. They almost released a dual core option to the X299 uh, Coffee Lake X uh, CPU options, but that would have been stupid to like buy. A 150 euro CPU with a 400 euro motherboard so they like abandoned the whole uh, CPU model so uh, 7350k is still the fastest option and uh, since early 2017 I have been trying really hard to find a golden 7350k but my uh, bidding attempts haven't been so lucky all the uh, CPUs that I have tested were or have have been like uh, really bad or just uh, average. Uh, the best uh, CPU that I had was a pre-test CPU from HWBot forums that did like 5 GHz Cine Cinebench R15 on water uh, for, with like 1.25 Vico on this particular motherboard and uh, on LN2 like 6.55 GHz for Cinebench R15 and other uh, multi-threaded benchmarks. Uh, but sadly that is not enough. The best uh, 7350K samples out there in the world have done uh, Cinebench R15 and similar tests uh, at like 6.7 to 6.75. So uh, the difference between the uh, worst and the best CPU sample uh, with on these i3 CPUs is absolutely huge. Uh, to my eye, all the newest uh, batches that I have seen, uh, they are, all seem kind of bad. And the same thing goes for the, the most or the very earliest uh, batches of 750K. There are only very few uh, known batches that seem to be uh, very solid. And uh, I was really lucky to get my hands on, on a good pre-tested great batch 750K. And today I will be testing it first on water. I will show you how I bin uh, 1151 CPUs generally and uh, tell you how I determine if some CPU is good or not. And uh, in a couple of days time I will be trying this particular CPU on LN2 uh, and see if I can really uh, uh, do any competitive score uh, in the two core category. When I go on LN2 uh, I will be trying my uh, modified uh, direct die uh, CPU pot, uh, which is this is the original uh, SF3D uh, inflection point, which was released in 2010. Uh, SF3D brought this pot to the market with the Polish guy Riba. It was very it was very uh, cheap pot for its uh, performance. I think it is still the uh, best uh, value CPU pot ever released. It is not so strong compared to the uh, Kimping Cooling uh, T-Rex, but with this uh, modification, which you can see here, that you can see that there's only a small square uh, at the bottom of the CPU container. So with this uh, solution, I can remove uh, one layer of thermal paste. So uh, here you can see a milled uh, IHS, so this works uh, the same way as any normal IHS, this will lock the CPU PCB down to the socket with the uh, uh, retention mechanism. But this uh, square will just fit the uh, 
small square of the uh, CPU pot and it will uh, look just like that so uh, it will touch directly the CPU die and th therefore I can remove one layer of thermal paste. Uh, I have put some uh, thermal pads around the uh, square so it will make more even uh, contact uh, and it should uh, sit uh, like more carefully on the CPU. So uh, I will be testing that out soon and I'll, I will try to make a video of it. So uh, uh, this is why I recommended to use two different types of uh, BIOS, BIOSes on the board in my original uh, how to run a Coffee Lake CPU in a Z170 or Z270 motherboard uh, guide video which I made uh, around a year ago. So uh, I have the modified Coffee Lake BIOS on the main BIOS and, a, and an older P 7.40D BIOS on the secondary BIOS chip and I can use that older BIOS if I run uh, any uh, Cape Lake or Skylake CPU like 7700K, 7350K, 6700K and so on. So uh, here, in the socket, here in the socket you can see the 8700K, my original one, I have been using this uh, as a some kind of daily system uh, uh, continuously since uh, spring 2018, so around one year now, and that it has been working flawless. Uh, even with the silver paint at the back side of the CPU, it has been working extremely well in any type in every kinds of uh, daily use, so uh, I can really say that the uh, modification uh, works really well uh, on a good motherboard. So uh, for my testing I will be unsoldering the uh, jumper wire as it is not needed with the uh, uh, older CPUs. I'm not fully sure that can do any harm, but I will be unsoldering it just to be sure. Uh, the wise thing that I could do is that I could solder some kind of on-off switch to this jumper wire so I could use it uh, like back and forth I could decide if I want to have the jumper wire there or not so uh, uh, I will not show, show it to you on camera as I want to make the video shorter but I will unsolder the jumper wire then I will put some uh, liquid metal between the IHS and uh, the CPU die and then I will get on and do a little overclock test with you. So here we are in the bus with the 7350K and uh, we can already uh, see or determine that the CPU is really really strong by looking at the stock CPU V core voltage value aka the VID. So uh, the, uh, it really tells me that the best CPUs or 7350K samples out there uh, have much lower VID than 1.1 volts. The very bad ones that I had, uh, which only did like 5 gigahertz for Cinebench with uh, 1.35 volts, had a VID value of like 1.12, so 1.120. So uh, compared to that, this has 50 millivolts lower VID. It is a huge difference. So uh, 1.072, it's definitely the best one or the best value I've seen myself. So uh, uh, I'm using uh, Windows Server 2012 uh, for pinning or testing purposes. So uh, we can just load, I will load a test uh, profile here in, in the bar. So uh, I will first test what's the uh, B-Core requirement for 5 GHz Cinebench, so we'll set 50 on the CPU multiplier and 4.5 on the cache. Uh, here we can just enable OC tweaking and uh, max out the power settings, so uh, 4095 watts on the long duration and short duration power limits, uh, maximum long duration maintained and 255.5 uh, amps on the uh, uh, CPU core and system agent current limit. On DRAM, I'm only using some uh, very simple, uh, a very simple uh, profile. Just so I, I don't really uh, test memory uh, now, and it doesn't really matter. The uh, IMCs or the memory controllers haven't really dif differed that much uh, since the launch of Skylake. They all are pretty much the same. 
uh, I mean, with the modern coffee lakes compared to the earliest Skylake CPUs like the 6700K, they all run uh, memories kind of uh, similar way, so uh, it doesn't really differ that much. The minus part of this particular one board is that the maximum multiplier for memory is only 4133, so uh, we are limited to that. So now I'll set uh, CPU V core to fixed mode and 1.25 volts with load line calibration 1. Maximum value on the switching frequency, so 1 MHz or 1000 kHz, uh, which wherever you want to uh, say it. Uh, then uh, it's like 1.46 or so on the memory, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and 1.2 on the VCCIO and VCCSA. Uh, nothing really important in the uh, CPU features setting. We can disable virtualization or and uh, no execute memory protection. We don't need those. AHCI, everything is pretty much in order. So yeah. Now we can just uh, move these settings and uh, see how it uh, looks like in the OS. Uh, I'll use the uh, Azure Formula Drive uh, software in the OS to change all the settings. So now I made it. To, so now I made it to the operating system. Uh, I installed the Azure Formula Drive uh, overclocking software to change all the settings in the OS, and we will be using this to change the uh, uh, multipliers and the. Uh, the CPU V core on the fly in the operating system. So uh, uh, I will start by uh, testing the 5 GHz uh, in Cinebench with 1.25 set V core and then we will work our way down. So uh, we can just open Cinebench and uh, start running it at 1.25 volts. Uh, when looking at uh, When looking at core temp, we can see that the uh, core temperatures are extremely low. So uh, right now I'm measuring 48 and 46 degrees on the cores. So uh, the maximums have been less than 50 degrees. It's, it, it is extremely uh, cool as I'm using liquid metal uh, thermal, grizzly, thermal grizzly conductor knob between the IHS and the CPU die and uh, Kimping cooling KPX between the IHS and the uh, water block. So uh, this seems to run quite fine. So 1.25 is my uh, like personal uh, statement that a good 7350K has to pass uh, 5 gigahertz Cinebench with less than 1.25 on the V-Core. So now we can drop the uh, V-Core to 1.225. And uh, on CPU-Z we can, we can read 1.216. We'll open Cinebench again. Of course, now that I uh, dropped the V core, the maximum temperature should go down by a degree or two. So now it's reading 46 and 44 degrees on the uh, core temp cores. So uh, it seems to run fine still. So uh, no issues at all. I can, uh, I will quit the Cinebench again and. Uh, Drop it, drop the vehicle even more, so I can make it, make the video a little bit faster. So I'll set 1.2 uh, volts now, with same uh, 5 gigahertz on the core and 4.5 on the cache. Still seems to run really fine, so it's it really tells me that this CPU sample is really really strong. Uh, CPU Z is measuring uh, 1.184 to 1 1.2 still runs fine uh, my best uh, 7700k did 5 gigahertz for Cinebench with something like 1.13 so uh, I think that's a good comparison to this CPU but yeah my pre previous best 7350k required 1.25 or 5 gigahertz Cinebench, and the worst ones required like 1.35 volts. So this CPU is literally from another planet compared to those uh, 5 gigahertz 1.35 volt uh, CPU samples. 
So the difference between a really bad CPU and an extremely good CPU is extremely uh, high. So we can we can uh, stop this again and uh, drop the Vico even more. So now 1.165 uh, set Vico is running. So CPU Z is measuring 1.152. So I think uh, if I had a little bit cooler uh, room temperature, I could go below 1.15. Uh, 15 but yeah this is already extremely good result so uh, we can pretty much say that the uh, uh, lowest point is around 1.16 or 1.17 around that so uh, uh, after this has passed I will try uh, what it can do at let's say 1.3 set week or uh, I've, no, I've not seen a, an i3 this far that has done uh, more than 5.2 gigahertz uh, for Cinebench on water so maybe this will do 5.3 to 5.4. So uh, I got the uh, Cinebench to run for a few seconds at 1.15 set, but it crashed uh, after a few seconds. So I think if I just could get the room temperature lower, it would pass uh, at uh, 1.15 volts. Now I'm trying uh, 5.2 gigahertz with 1.3 set volts. Uh, when looking at core temp, the uh, <laughs> Temperatures are still great. They are like 48, 46, so less than 50 degrees. So, uh, yeah, 5.2 gigahertz is very, very easy at 1.3 uh, uh, set volts. So if I set the uh, multiply to 5.3, let's see if I can run uh, Cinebench at all at 5.3 at this voltage. No, so uh, I'll raise the V core to 1.35 uh, and try again. All right, after some testing, uh, I was able to pass uh, 5.3 gigahertz on Cinebench with 1.33 set uh, V core. Then I pushed for uh, 5.4 gigahertz uh, and uh, it passed uh, quite well at. 1.4 uh, set vehicle and the lowest uh, I could pass the test at that speed was 1.38 uh, set vehicle and uh, measured that is around 1.375 and the highest cache I could push uh, with the same voltage was uh, 4.9 uh, 5 gigahertz didn't uh, want to pass so 4.9 is already quite good result and uh, this kind of core speed is extremely high for a budget i3 CPU. So yeah, that's how I've been uh, CPU generally. I really don't uh, buffer with uh, testing only with uh, AVX uh, tests like Prime95 because the uh, you get the whole idea by running uh, something like uh, Cinebench. The uh, uh, overall uh, uh, vehicle requirements for uh, those categories go up uh, linearly the same way. So. If a CPU requires 1.35 for 5 GHz Cinebench, it is not guaranteed that it will be stable for uh, AVX at 5 GHz at all, or it might require like 1.4 volts or even above. And uh, then it's really a huge question about cooling that can uh, the cooling solution handle the uh, heat. So, uh, yeah, 5.4 GHz is definitely extremely nice result, and I'm really looking forward to pushing. Uh, uh, this CPU on LM2 uh, soon. Uh, if you like this video, if you like to see uh, how I generally test CPUs, then uh, please like and share the video and please subscribe to my channel. Uh, this time I really won't bother by uh, testing the memory because they are all the same. I mean the memory controllers are all the same uh, as I already said earlier. So uh, the uh, end result with the memory kit would be pretty much the same of course depends on which motherboard we use so uh, yeah uh, if you like if you like the video then thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I'll get back to you soon thanks for watching and see you